Hello, my name is Will, and welcome along to another Rudiment of the Week. Rudiment of the Week. This week, we're looking at the five stroke roll. Alright, yes, the five stroke roll. This week I'm going to be showing you how to play that rudiment initially just as a sticking, but once we have that, I'm going to give you an exercise that hopefully is going to help you get the five stroke roll into your drum beats as well. Now, the pattern itself is quite straightforward, but the challenge you have with this rudiment is the speed and timing that you have to play it in. The pattern is basically what it says in the tin it's five strokes played as a roll. So you literally play one, two, three, four, five. But we're gonna play it as right, right, left, left, right. So one, two, three, four, five. Right, right, left, left, right. One, two, three, four, five. Right, right, left, left, right. Now you can play the five stroke roll in single strokes if you'd like to. You could just play right, left, right, left, right, and just play them all as singles. But just like it's important to practice your double strokes and your single strokes, it's also important to practice your five stroke roll in both singles and doubles. I'm showing you today, just to keep things nice and clear, the double stroke version of the five stroke roll, which is kind of like the traditional way that you would normally play it. Now, once you do have your right, right, left, left, right, you're gonna also want to be able to play it with your left hand leading. So left, left, right, right, left. Same idea that it's two doubles and a single, but your left hand starts. One, two, three, four, five. And when you practice this, you wanna take it in turns. So you lead with one with the right, then with one with the left. Should look something like this. Why do we have to practice both right hand lead and left hand lead? Well, if we want our hands to be faster, that means both hands have to be faster. What tends to happen when we depend so much on our right for everything, our left hand kind of gets very lazy. Your hands are like two runners that have got to run a race, but tied together at the same time. If one runner is really fast, does loads of fitness training and eats really well, and the other hand runner is kind of like, oh, I didn't really move for like six months, then you actually end up having this right hand kind of pulling the left hand along on that piece of string. What we want is both the hands or both the runners to be able to run as fast as possible at the same rate. And if one gets loads more training than the other, then this one just gets way better than this one. So always make sure that you practice both the right hand lead and the left hand lead, because if you do, you're gonna be able to bring up the speed of both hands, and both runners, you're kind of like the coach in this situation, and you'll end up with far quicker hands. Once you've got that five stroke roll down, you can start to try this other exercise. What I would like you to do is with your right hand, you're gonna play four evenly spaced hits, and you're just gonna keep the counting straightforward at the moment. You're just gonna go one, two, three, four. Except when we get to four, we're not actually going to just play that one hit. We're gonna try and play our five stroke roll. So we're gonna go one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. One more time. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. 
And actually what's happening there is where, when we're getting to the fifth hit of our one, two, three, four, five, we've gone back to our one. So really what I have is one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, would you like a one, two, three, yes, I'd like a one, two, three, does it come with one, two, three, yes, it comes with one. What we're doing is we're squeezing the first four notes of that five stroke roll in just to that one beat of time. So give that a go and try it both on your right hand and your left hand. Should look and sound something like this. Left hand. Bit faster. Left hand. Once you can do that, try and see if you can do the same exercise, but this time count up to seven before you play your five stroke roll. So now you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Would you like a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, margarita, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I like pizza, one. And you're gonna to wanna to be able to do that with both your right and your left hand. Should look something like this. And it faster. Left hand. So once you can do that, I'd like you to try it again, but this time, see if you can count it in eighth notes. So rather than one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, you're gonna now try and count one and two and three and four, one, two, three, four, one, and two and three and four. Would you like a one and two and three and four margarita one and two and three and four I like pizza yes and I wonder how quickly I can say that one and two and three and four would you like a one and two and three and four margarita one and two and three and four I like pizza one and two and three and four margarita one it sounds silly, but those sorts of kind of like fun kind of words that you can use in these exercises always seem to help all of my students. So do give it a go. See if uh, I like pizza margarita works for you as well. Okay, let's move on over to the kit. Now, once you have that down on the practice pad, we're just gonna take that exact pattern and play it on the hi-hat. So literally just one and two and three and four, one, two, three, four, five, and put our five stroke roll on the hi-hat. So exactly the same, but just on a different surface. But 
The difference is, is that we're now going to try and see if we can get our bass drum and our snare drum involved. And we're going to put our bass drum in the kind of traditional rock beat place of beats one and three. And the snare drum is going to land on two and four. So now, instead of playing one and two with just the right hand, our left hand is going to land on beats two and four at the same time. So we're going to have bass and snare and bass and snare, one, two, three, four, one. And this is the difficult part because it's going to be one, two, three, four, one. The bass drum is now going to be landing with the right hand. So you might want to just try, first of all, playing a five stroke roll with a bass drum on the end of it. Something like this. Once you're comfortable with that, try and see if you can bring in that bass and that snare and really take your time. The slower the beat is, the more time you have to fit in those quick five stroke rolls at the end of your bar. Should sound something, hopefully, like this. Bit faster. What's basically happening is that when you play your five stroke roll, you're playing it in what are known as 30 second notes. That's actually what you usually play as eight evenly spread hits per beat. But we're only playing half of that because we're just playing on the and of four. So it's quite a lot of notes to fit in a very small amount of, amount of time. So if you go too fast with your drum beat, you're not leaving yourself enough time to be able to play all of those notes in such a small amount of time. So really practice this super slow and slowly get faster and faster to allow your hands to develop that technique of being able to play those 30 second note doubles that fast. Once you start to have that down though, you can start to experiment a little bit. I'm gonna try putting in some different bass drum variations. So rather than just playing one bass drum on beats one and three, I mean, quite a few different beats. And if you've been playing drums for a bit, hopefully you might even have some of your favorite grooves that you can start to put alongside this five stroke roll. So say if I just take a nice kind of syncopated groove of like one, two, and three, and four. Bass, snare, bass, bass, snare. I'm gonna put that underneath this hand pattern of our five stroke roll that we've come up with today. So. starts to kind of make the groove sound quite different. And this is kind of an opportunity for you to really experiment. It's just at the end of the bar, the five stroke roll. So it's almost like kind of like fair game wherever you put before there. So spend some time experimenting, move the snare drums around, try some different bass drum variations and see what you can come up with. I'll show you just a few ideas that I've had recently, but this is a chance for you to really experiment. Here are some of my favorites. Now I have thrown in some more complicated ideas there and I've not done that to scare you, I've hopefully done that to maybe inspire you to want to use the five stroke roll in different ways. But the drum beat is up to you. The structure is there for you to use, but I really want you to decide whether you can make it as simple or as complicated as you like. And both ways work brilliantly. 
What's brilliant about the five stroke roll is it, it's got that burst of energy, that burst of flavor that we can put at the end of a bar. And it just gives it a nice little, little reset. It's a nice little zoom. It's like drrr. You know, this kind of little, I don't even know what this, if it was a hand movement, it'd be this. Oh, 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 a little kind of like wizardy spell. Slow, oh, yeah, I've just put that little wizard spell at the end of your hi-hat there. I don't know what I'm saying. I can't think of quite the right analogy. But hopefully you kind of get what, what I'm saying. It just makes things sound just exciting in your drum beats. Now, we're gonna change things slightly a little bit now. Try this time picking up that five stroke roll out of your drum beat, off of the and of four, and then putting it back down on the and of one. This means instead of playing one and two and three and four, five stroke roll landing on the bass drum, it would land on two because it would go one and five stroke roll two on the snare. So then you have, as an idea. Which if you put with the bass drum, just perhaps on beats one and three again, snare on two and four, you get something sounding like this. So we're just adding that burst of flavor, those bursts of notes into a different place in the beat. And again, you could do exactly the same thing as you did with the first example. You could then mess around with the bass drums, extra snares, moving the snares into different places around that five stroke roll. And again, you come up with completely new ideas. Here's a few more. Final idea before I go is to maybe see if you can put these two ideas together. So we have a five stroke roll still on the and of one, but we bring back the five stroke roll on the and of four. This gives us a pattern just on the hi hat uh, and the snare drum, I'll show you, of this. which again, if we then bring in the bass drum on one and three, will sound like this. So every time I change what I play in the hi-hat, I'm going back to basics with my bass drum. And I really think you should do exactly the same thing as well, because if you start off simple, you can then add up the layers and make it more complicated as you go. And that's a really cool one there. It kind of gives a bit more of an identity to the groove. I love it, just by adding in that five stroke roll, that little bit of energy, that little bit of flavor, just makes our drum beats sound more exciting. They just have more energy. It's just like we're taking our drum beats from being a chicken korma to like a chicken tikka masala, or vegetable korma, or vegetable masala, whatever you like, eat what you want, be who you want to be. I had Indian last night. But the point is, by adding the five stroke roll in, we're hopefully gonna be building some more ideas so we've got a wider vocabulary of drum beats. Give it a go. Try messing around with the five stroke roll in your hi-hat patterns and see what different drum beats you can come up with. I hope you've got something from this today. And if you have, please like this video and subscribe to the channel for more drum lessons just like this one. My name's Will and I'll see you again soon.